Hello, hello, Emmanuel Shachov. Hello, hello. Identity, the quest for Israel's future. Many Jewish communities around the world, in the United States, in the UK, that are seeking for great stories, great content, great books, great lectures. If you could share a bit about your personal story and about your book, please. Well, my personal story is interesting. I'd like to think so. Um, we can assure it, that. It, it, it describes my uh, growing up in Germany, not knowing anything of my Jewish an ancestry, uh, finding a connection to Israel through pure circumstances, discovering in the process that I do have Jewish ancestry, and then um, making Aliyah, uh, coming to Israel and uh, living my life in Israel. And of course, what I did in Israel, in the Air Force, in the Mossad, uh, and uh, later in politics. So it's, it's a, a nice story. And when you're saying that you, you found your Jewish roots, what exactly do you mean? How exactly did it occur? Um, while I was uh, contemplating Aliyah, before knowing that I had Jewish ancestry, uh, it started to filter through that I did have. My, my mother eventually at one stage, after I, I questioned her several times whether we don't have any Jewish ancestry because I wanted to make Aliyah easier for me. Obviously, uh, it's very difficult to, to make Aliyah when you're not Jewish. Uh, so we were looking. Uh, so she, in, in the end, she came up with the true story, which she kept from me for quite a while, uh, that uh, my biological father, who I never met, uh, was Jewish, and uh, and that's when you know that that's when it all came together. Wow! Why why was she keeping that kind of secret from you? I I really don't know because uh, what she really did through through all this throughout my youth, she um, she manipulated things in a way which which made me end up in Israel. So so it, it was like. Uh, I don't know whether she did that subconsciously or consciously, but uh, it was clear that uh, that I didn't end up in Israel by chance. Uh, uh, why she kept uh, the, the fact that my father was Jewish from me for so long, uh, I, I really don't know and I can't ask her anymore. And uh, I, I just lived with it and, and I, I, I accepted that because that, that's the way it was. What was the age that she really told you, well, Emmanuel? When I was 18. When I was 18, yeah. When I was 18 and, and in, in Israel already uh, uh, to, uh, to prepare my Aliyah. So um, uh, it was literally in the last minute. And afterwards, during your staying in Israel, in the Israeli Air Force, and in the Israeli Mossad, keeping secrets was something that became more a war in your life. One story that you can share that is revealed also in the book, also in your lectures, about your service in the Mossad? Um, one story. Um, I think maybe the, one, of the, one of the stories, uh, it's, it's quite funny, keeping secrets and everything, uh, related to the visit of Shimon Peres uh, to uh, Jakarta in Indonesia. At the time, there were no and there still are not diplomatic relations uh, between Israel and Indonesia. It was a secret visit, and so uh, considerable effort went into keeping the visit secret. Uh, I was in charge of uh, preparing the visit, and uh, we had arranged everything. Uh, when Peres arrived at the airport, we took him uh, in the car with the motorcycle uh, uh, escort, and. Um, when we got to the hotel, the idea was to go into the parking garage so nobody would end up seeing Mr. Perez. Uh, but the driver, uh, I wasn't in the car for technical reasons, uh, and the driver apparently was not briefed by the Indonesian, our Indonesian counterparts, and he decided that Mr. Perez should be delivered to the main entrance, which, which he did. And Perez was, you know, enchanted because it's a beautiful hotel walked into the hotel, you know, security people and us scrambling behind him. He walks up to the lobby, turns around, sees the beautiful cafe which is overlooking the whole, uh, the whole uh, square, further down below. 
and says, uh, let's, let's have a, uh, something to drink. Uh, so we, we go over, the, the place is packed, completely packed, and uh, the people there make room for us. And there's a singer there. And uh, so uh, while we're taking our place, the singer turns around and she looks at Perez and she recognizes him and she says into the microphone, Oh, let us welcome Mr. Shimon Perez oh. in front of hundreds of people in the hotel, which wasn't exactly the idea of secrecy at the time, but it was, it was a, a cute event. Nothing <laughs> happened, of course, uh, but you know, as these things go, so that was nice. Identity, the quest for Israel's future in English, also the book in Hebrew, and also then putting a very, very unique map of Israel's future here in the Middle East with the Palestinians. In a nutshell, what kind of idea are you sharing there in the book? Um, there's no way around it. We will have to federate the, the land of Israel, uh, make it a federation, uh, because obviously we're not willing, Israel is not willing to have another sovereignty next to her uh, between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean. And we can't have a, a reality which would conceivably develop into a, a full apartheid state. Uh, so we should federate, make it into a federation of 30 cantons, 20 of them Jewish majority, 10 of them Palestinian majority, and take it from there with the constitution, make it into a normal country. But that's still some time ahead. Emmanuel Shachov, identity, the quest for Israel's future. Thank you so much. Thank you.